Okay, I'm on target again. Roger that. Green light. I'm sending it. We're up to five. I'm going to try to stay clear of the camera, but we'll try to get relatively close, like five feet, ten feet. There's another range estimation technique that's commonly employed out there and this is something you guys are going to want to be aware of because its implementation is imperfect at best. But it's something that can give you some sort of qualitative idea of uh, how far the fire might be or what you're dealing with. And we're talking about the crack thump method. This is found in most of your sniper field manuals. The 23-10 has it. The, uh, most of the other ones have it. And this is a very, very commonly trained technique by most schools. And uh, there are some general rules. And let's just go ahead and read the rule first, and then we'll go back and analyze it and see how this really works in real life. So according to FM 23-10, it's talking about distance to firer. Now, what a lot of folks who train people don't realize is that this was never intended to be a quantitative method of determining the range to the firer, okay? This was under the section of the field manual where you're determining the location of hidden firers. So that's where this is most helpful. Um, when you're trying to actually give a number on the range to the firer using this method, it's going to be a lot more problematic. So let's just go ahead and read what the FM 2310 states here. All right, it says that the time difference between the crack and the thump can be converted into an approximate range. A one second lapse between the two is about 600 yards with most calibers. A one half second lapse is about 300 yards. Now that might seem like a pretty bold statement when you look at it. You've seen this on a lot of Hollywood movies probably, uh, maybe Quigley Down Under. Where, the, where one of the bad guys gets shot and the thump of the rifle comes on down a couple seconds later and then they use that to determine how far away he was. The problem is, is that the effectiveness of this technique is going to be contingent upon atmosphere and the cartridge is being used and there's a lot of other assumptions that are made uh, to make that statement. Okay? Now this was never intended as a, as a quantitative ranging technique, but we are going to look at it nonetheless so that you can really understand and get a good idea of of uh, what you can learn from this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the speed of sound. So the speed of sound is right about 340 meters a second at sea level and for most other atmosphere conditions you could average it out to be about 350 meters per second. That's a little over a thousand feet per second and uh, about 760 miles an hour somewhere in that range and it varies with atmosphere. Okay. Um, your, your typical rifle bullet is going to be traveling two to three times faster than that, okay? Your bullet's going to be double or triple sonic at the muzzle. The thing to realize is that the bullet speed is not constant. So what happens is when you pull the trigger, you're going to have the explosion, the muzzle blast coming off. That's going to put off quite a sound. And uh, downrange, that's going to sound kind of like a thump. At the same time, you're going to also be displacing air supersonically with the bullet. It's going to be cutting through that air, and uh, when it compresses the atmosphere, as it's just tearing through there, going two and three times the speed of sound, it's going to kind of make a shock wave, and that's what's known as the rifle crack. 
And as hey. that kind of echoes going down range, you're going to hear it, and it's going to have that crack sound to it. Hey. That last part of that sound is what we're describing as the rifle crack. Now, if you're sitting there and you're taking fire from a, from an enemy that's a couple hundred meters away, what you're typically going to hear is the sound of the crack of the bullet whizzing over you. Now, it's going to sound similar to a gunshot if it's right over the top of your head. It's going to be kind of a snap sound, um, kind of a crack. There's different ways guys have described it, and we'll show you here what that looks like. Some guys have described it as a crack or a snap or kind of a zip sound like a whip crack. And uh, that's the first thing you're going to hear if you're taking a near miss. And if it impacts something next to you, you're going to hear the thud of the impact or the, the pinging or the clanging of his hitting metal. Now, when you start timing the, the time interval between that sound of the bullet arrival and the actual arrival of the thump of the gunshot, it's going to give you some limiting parameters of how far the shooter can be. Now, we need to look at this critically, though. So here's the major issue with crack thump method. Your speed of sound is going to be relatively constant. It's going to be going, uh, you know, dependent upon atmosphere, about 340, 350 meters a second constantly. Your rifle bullet is going to start off extremely fast at its muzzle velocity, and due to atmospheric drag, it's going to start to decrease in speed tremendously. And at a certain point, it's going to really start to slow down. It's going to actually come down and go subsonic. Once the bullet slows down to where it drops below the speed of sound, all of a sudden, your thump is going to start to catch up with the crack. So let's go ahead and actually plot this out and see what's going on in reality so that we can get a good idea of what's going on and uh, the concepts going on here. So here's the crack thump time interval between the uh, bullet arrival and the report arrival at the target. And this is for a 762 by 39 using 123 grain full metal jackets, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 2300 feet above sea level, barometric pressure 27 inches of mercury. So this is a, a pretty typical continental atmosphere density we have going on here. Um, but what we have is when you look over on the graph, uh, what you have in the bars is the time interval between the crack and the thump in seconds, okay? And down on the bottom, you have the distance to the fire who's firing upon you. And if you look over on the left, you can see at the muzzle at zero meters, uh, there's the crack and the thump are simultaneously. If someone's shooting at you a point blank, there's no, going to be no difference. At 100 meters, you're going to have a small difference, about a tenth of a second. That's not discernible. When you start getting out to about uh, 400, 500 meters, you're going to have a time interval of almost a half a second with the 7.62 by 39. So now the uh, bullet, which is traveling supersonic, has gotten quite a ways in front of the thump of the rifle. Okay, And uh, so if you're taking fire at that distance, you're going to hear the crack of the rifle bullet whizzing by you. And then about 0.4 seconds later, you're going to hear the thump of the rifle itself. Now, what you can see happening here beyond 400 meters is it's going to start to plateau. Now, the reason for this is that the rifle bullet is starting to decelerate. It's slowing way down now. And the thump of the rifle is now starting to kind of catch up. So your uh, time intervals are going to start to stabilize here. They've reached kind of an equilibrium. Now, in a 7.62 by 39... They go transonic about 600 meters. So that's when the, that's the maximum supersonic range of this cartridge. So after 600, now your trend starts to go the other direction. Now your thump is starting to catch up with your crack because your bullet is actually going slower than the speed of sound. So now that thump is catching up, and now your time interval is decreasing again, okay? Until you get out to about 1,100, 1,200, you're going to have 
the crack and the thump arriving at exactly the same time. So there is going to be no crack thump at that range. Now, if you go beyond that, now this is way beyond the maximum effective range of that cartridge, but uh, you're going to see that you're actually going to have the thump before the crack now. So now you're going to hear the thump of the rifle before you hear the crack. So just by looking at this example, you can see that the crack thump method is only going to be effective during the first leg of that incline as you're uh, going out to about 500 meters. Beyond that, you have a stabilization in which you're not going to be able to discern any kind of time interval difference between the different uh, distances. And after that, it's going to start reversing. And if you can see, if you're trying to determine the distance to the fire and it's a 0.4 second uh, crack thump, you, you have two choices. It's either going to be 300 meters away or it's going to be, you know, 750, 800 meters away because the crack thump time interval is the same. So this can be problematic depending on what kind of a reverberation you have of the thump, how well it's being amplified by the terrain. Uh, the thump might be pretty loud even at 750 or 800 meters. Um, usually you should be able to discern the difference between the thump at 300 meters or 400 meters and the thump at, you know, seven or 800 meters because it's obviously going to be a lot less at those ranges. But there are some other indications that you can learn uh, to give you a better idea. And for example, once the bullet goes transonic, a lot of times they're going to destabilize and they're going to make more of a whining sound, more of a radical buzzing or zipping type sound because now your bullet is destabilized and might be tumbling through the air. So it's going to make a choppier type sound at longer ranges after you get past the supersonic range if it's whizzing by you. So that's one method where you can determine, okay, well, that wasn't very close. That was pretty far. So this is not going to be a very effective method of determining the distance to the firer beyond 500 meters. And quite honestly, out to that range, um, you're going to be able to just tell employing other visual range estimation techniques a lot more closely how far the fire is actually going to be. So you're not going to want to rely on this in the field. Where this becomes more applicable is if you're taking fire from an enemy that's in an undisclosed location. You don't know where he's at. So you can quickly start to estimate the threat level as you're taking cover, at, at which time you can basically decide what kind of a holdover you're going to apply or if you're going to even have to employ a point blank zero or if you're going to have to do a, a range estimation. But as far as actually using this to uh, index your optic and determine the range to the fire, this is not going to be a determination technique. This is estimation at best. Now, let's take a look at some other cartridges, and uh, you're, you're going to start to see some uh, more issues that pop up here. Now, here we're looking at the crack thump of a 5.56 millimeter NATO, and this is with 55 grain full metal jacket. And uh, you can see here that it's a totally different crack thump curve, okay? Now, this is going to actually match what the manual says much more closely. The 762 by 39 did not really match what the manual said. The manual said that a one second lapse between the crack and the thump is about 600 yards with most calibers, underline most, okay? And a one half second lapse is about 300 yards. Okay, so I can see where they got this from. They determined that rule by looking at our own ammo. Now, if you're taking on an enemy that's going to be using different cartridge than the 5.56 millimeter, and you look up at the 762 by 39 which is probably more often going to be what you're getting shot at with, if you're overseas especially, uh, you can see that at 300 you have kind of a little bit of a difference. It's a 0.4. And at uh, 600, it's still only a half a second. It's not a full second. So this method has to be clarified, I think, in the manual or by trainers so that guys don't get confused with this because um, the level of confidence they give shooters using this method is a little bit too much confidence. And I think a lot of guys are actually adjusting their sights based on the crack thump method, and that's not going to be very helpful. If you're taking fire from a 762 by 39 and the manual is talking about a 5.56 millimeter, or even the 50 caliber uh, is going to be relatively the same out to about 600 meters as the 5.56. Um, you're going you're gonna to grossly miss judge the range to your firer and so that's not going to be very helpful so it's important to realize that there's huge differences in crack thump between different cartridges and uh especially when you're talking about the commonly used 762 by 39 in our own ammunition okay so 
a lot of times what our manuals are based on is our own stuff, and it's kind of surprising that some of that stuff made it in there without being uh, more clearly defined. Um, so that's an important note to make. And you can see here just a general trend with the 5.56 millimeter that the crack thump is going to be relatively the same, and it's true, uh, with, with most calibers from zero to, you know, 300 meters or you know even 400 meters you're going to have a general climbing trend in crack thump to where there's going to be a greater distance and then it starts to plateau and then the drop-offs are radically different depending on the cartridges uh, 762 by 39 is going to drop off a lot more quickly it's going to plateau between five and 600 meters and then it's going to drop down back to zero at about 1200 uh, 5.56 millimeters going to climb up for quite a bit longer. It's maintaining its velocity for a longer time. So you're going to see it only plateau seven, 800 meters and it's going to start dropping down and it's not going to go back to zero until way beyond probably 1500 meters. Now, when you're looking at heavier weapons like a 50 cal, uh, this is just with M33 ball. This is going to be maintaining its velocity for a lot longer. Your ballistic coefficient, your bullet weight's a lot heavier, and so it's going to maintain its speed. So it's going to be going, it's going to actually be climbing way past 1,000 meters. So for using crack thump method for large caliber weapons like a 50 cal, uh, this might be a lot more effective. You might actually be able to tell the difference between 600 or 500 meters and 1,000 meters using crack thump with that. But the trick is, if you're taking fire from an undisclosed location, you're not going to really know which caliber it is um, <laughs> for sure right off the bat. Uh, you know, someone's hammering at you with a PKM or a 14.5 millimeter, you're not going to know what's going on. So the main thing to take away from all this is that crack thump is going to be okay for kind of getting an idea of the threat level when you're taking cover from enemy fire. But for actually determining the range to the firer, uh, I would be very cautious in, in relying on that only. If that's all you got to go and you got to return fire, um, go ahead and use it. But uh, if you're trying to deliver any kind of precise fire beyond that, you're going to have to actually use a range determination technique or even visual range estimation is going to work a lot better than crack thump because there's a huge variety between different cartridges that could potentially be being used against you. And another thing to note here too is that the crack delivered by the rifle bullet passing overhead is going to be very dependent on exactly where it's flying. Uh, if it flies right next to your head, that's going to be pretty close. So that's going to be a, a very easy way to determine the arrival at the target. Now, if the bullet's uh, quite a bit farther over your head, it's going to have a different sound to it. But uh, the, the sound of the bullet is not going to be at a right angle to its velocity. It's going to be traveling behind the bullet quite a way. So it's going to be kind of V and out. So the shock wave is going to arrive actually after the bullets passed you. So these charts are uh, going to vary tremendously based on how far over your head or beside you that bullet has cracked by. The further away, the more inaccurate this is all going to be. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, we'll start off with a little Romanian AK. We'll zing a couple past and see how she goes. Hopefully I don't whack the camera down there. Right now I'll send them across the other side. Okay, now I'm going to go across the top. Okay, now I'm going to go further over the top. I'm going to go probably 10 feet over the top side. See if I can get a ricochet past it without hitting the camera. Okay, move up to this guy.
a little more velocity out of this same cartridge. All right, now we'll go across the other side. Listen for the full echo. Okay. Now we'll go up to something with a little more velocity. Five, five, six round. Chopper coming in. All right. We'll go across the other side with this. Maybe a couple ricochets past it. Came a little close. <laughs> I'll go over the top. 